Hi ladies and gentlemen, my name's Rudy Tatalia. Thanks for joining me on this podcast. It's great to have you listening in. I uh, hope that you get some value out of it. And uh, I have one rule, please, whatever you do, do not fall asleep. That will be really embarrassing. I won't know it anyway because I can't see you. But uh, it's just a really bad thing, isn't it? So let's try not to do that. I'll try and keep you awake with some interesting antidotes and uh, some stories around the topic, which is, I'll get to the point, it's around how we sell to our customers. Uh, What I try and get across to people is, uh, or to my clients, is that we should be looking at uh, telling stories more so than selling product. Uh, And what most companies do, what most business owners do is by default, they'll have this great idea for an ad uh, or they'll have a great um, marketing opportunity that's come up. So it might be in press or on radio or on TV. Uh, And mind you, on on TV and and radio, we only have 15 or 30 seconds really to... um, to get that message across. So I'm not necessarily talking about that. I'm talking about the uh, larger campaign or the larger effort that we are trying to put together for our marketplace. And, you know, I often laugh when I, well, I I try not to laugh, but I end up laughing. Um, Not that I'm judging, I do not judge, but I do have a laugh when I open up the paper and I see just back-to-back ads, which are primarily saying the same thing over and over again, whether you're a painter, a plumber, a candlestick maker, an accountant. They're all very, well, most ads, not all of them, some are great, um, but most ads that I see are very beige, not in colour, but in style, in format, in messaging, and they're really focusing on three things. They're focusing on price, service, and quality. Price, service, and quality. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I see price, service, or quality, I think to myself, this is really boring for one, but it doesn't actually say anything because it's been so overused by businesses, by companies. And I I mean, I know in my own situation, I travel uh, a lot throughout Queensland running business workshops. Um, Slight plug there, but anyway, I do run them. Uh, I I do a lot of stuff throughout Brisbane and regionally. And uh, and I always uh, am interested in seeing what, because people bring along their ads and we have a chat about marketing and and what they're doing. And I always get fascinated with uh, when I ask business owners, you know, if I was going to put your business on a ladder with a a competitor or a group of competitors, um, why would I go to you over your competitor? Which is a fair question, I think. Sometimes it's, I don't do that first day because... They may not come back second day, but, you know, I'm nice about it. I'm diplomatic. I say, look, you love your business. You've got customers. Obviously, people love your business. But as a newbie, as someone that sees your ad, why would I come to you over your competitor? And the normal response is our prices are better or we have great quality or our service is brilliant. And all those things are great. Um, well, the price may not be, depending on you know whether you want to make a profit or not. I mean, you don't want to give things away, but if you've got a, a fair price in the marketplace uh, based on you know what you're, or in, um, in comparison to what your competitors are doing, and if you've got great service, that's good. We, I should never, I would never say have terrible service. I would never say have terrible quality. Uh, but we can't hang our hats on that as a communication piece because everyone's doing it. And so this is where 
uh, storytelling can be really powerful in our marketing, in our communication, because what actually differentiates our business from another business? And it could be our product, it could be our service, it could be our quality. And if those things are large points of difference, and if no one else is talking about them, then you know there could be a justification to put that forward as a as a positive message for your business and it could convert leads and those leads could convert into sales and everyone's happy because business is coming in however uh, if you're in a a cluster of competitors and everyone's saying the same thing you really need to uh, develop a strategy uh, that is going to make your business stand out above what everyone else is saying. Why do we do that? Well, you're going to do a lot of money for one. You're going to do a lot of money, especially if someone in the marketplace already has the market share or the primary market share. So in business, we need to have a separate strategy as a number one and we need to have a separate strategy as a number two and as a number three or a number four. Uh, and whatever number you are, <laughs> there's not, not only just four businesses in one category, there could be a hundred or a thousand, but you get my point. Uh, you, wh where you sit on the ladder uh, in relation to your competitors uh, really does drive the type of strategy that you develop and that you ultimately put forward in the marketplace. So this is where storytelling can be powerful because we can change our ad from trying just to sell product. So my name's John, I'm a plumber, I've got great quality, I've got great service, my prices are fair, call me because I'm a nice guy, I'm trusted, you know, all those types of things. Uh, you know, we consumers, we're pretty, and, I, and myself included, we're a pretty brainy bunch. I think we've gotten onto it now. We can see through a lot of just, you know, poorly thought out advertising, poorly thought out marketing. And we are really a bunch of skeptics in a lot of way. We don't believe in a lot of things that we read or we see because we, um, we've been burnt and uh, what's on the packaging of some of the things that we've purchased, and I don't mean physical packaging, but what people tell us about our, their, their business is not always what they produce. So the results can be quite disparate. So um, really what we need to do is, again, come up with that point of difference and storytelling can be really powerful. So we need to sort of ask ourselves a few questions about our business when we prepare for this, like why are we in business? What led us to developing um, our product, our service? Why, what were we doing before the business? What led us into doing what we're doing now? And what that does, it sets up a framing for your business. It sets up uh, an angle that you are bringing to the marketplace. And this can be really powerful because you're no longer just trying to sell what everyone else is selling. You're building credibility as a business because there's a justification for why you've entered into the industry you're in, the business you're in. Um, it could be based around, you know, if you're a, uh, if you've been a chef for 15 years and you specialize in this type of cuisine, and then after 15 years, you've decided to start your own restaurant based on that cuisine so that you can share your knowledge, share your passion, your love of food um, with the world. I mean, that's a better story than putting an ad in the paper and saying, come to us because our service is great, our prices are fair, and our quality is reasonable. Our quality is great. Remember, what we're trying to do is engage with people on a psychological level, from a psychological standpoint. And we really have to put ourselves in our uh, consumers' shoes all the time. 
Because in the end, uh, it doesn't really matter what we think about our business. Uh, you know, there is no reality in business, there's only perception. And when we have a, a market that we're trying to introduce to our product or service, we need to illustrate that in a way, we need to compel people in a way to engage with us. And this is why a lot of marketing, a lot of advertising simply just won't work. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, uh, customers will come to me, will either be running through things in, in my workshops or I'll have a client that I've picked up and I'll say, just lay out everything you've been doing in, in marketing and we'll get to chatting about different marketing channels and they'll say I did radio it didn't work I did a TDC it didn't work I, I ran press it doesn't work so nothing none of these mediums work for me uh, and when I actually drill down further and have a look at their communication the communication is boring it's sterile it's beige um, again it's focusing on the three evils price, quality, service, and I call them evils, not because they're evils, but because um, by default, most businesses just go to those. Uh, they're just your garden variety responses. Uh, and so we have to be really careful not to blame the medium. Now, sometimes we choose the wrong medium based on our target group or what we're trying to achieve. But, you know, a lot of times it actually comes down to, well, for, in my experience, uh, it actually comes down to the, the actual communication piece, the concept, the story that we're actually telling in our marketing um, that then brings people uh, back to a website or to some sort of call to action and, and is engaging enough or compelling enough that they want to respond to that and know about our business further. So I always tell people, you know, the... Um, I tell people a lot, don't I? I, I, I hope I don't come across as being too uh, sort of overbearing, but I, I'm, people pay me to tell them stuff. So I tell them stuff, even if they don't want to hear it sometimes. Or I go to another room and yell it out if they're bigger than I am. But, um, I, you know, I often tell people, you really, um, you know, you, you need to focus on the storytelling because it's going to really differentiate yourself from your, your competitors. Uh, and the, the reason why storytelling is so powerful is because, uh, and this is what I, I tell people in my workshops, the, the transaction that takes place between our business, your business, and the consumer, you know, we focus on getting people into a shop if we're a retail store, or we focus on getting people to the website uh, and those are extremely important. I'm not saying they're not important. If you're a retail store, you want people in, in your shop. And, uh, and you know, as, if you're an e-commerce site, uh, you want people on your website browsing around and, and buying things. But we have to take it back a step further. We have to really consider that um, a sale is made in the mind. It's made between the ears. Uh, and when we're not focusing on that, when that isn't paramount to how we're developing our strategies, uh, the campaigns we're wanting to put forward, we're really missing out on a crucial uh, step in the overall lead conversion process. And, you know, I remember when I first got into marketing, which was an extremely very long time ago, I'm I was going to say I'm embarrassed to say. I'm not embarrassed to say. I'm, ha I'm happy I'm the age I am, but I just wish I had more hair. But, we, you know, you, you give what, what, what you got, right? Um, you know, what I, I remember when, uh, when I first got into marketing that uh, branding, you know, all these people were going, branding was sort of a buzzword. This is a long time ago. And really the only people that were branding was your large multinationals or international companies and um, you know even even today people say to me was well, branding really important and I said well it is if you want to grow your business 
It is if you want to grow your business because branding is the DNA of your business. Branding actually tells the world, tells your market, what, you know, what do we stand for? What is our category? What are we in the marketplace for? It's what is our personality? How do we think? How do we look? How do we feel? How do we talk? So your brain becomes a person in a way. You know, it's uh, it's a personality of your business. And with branding, uh, you know, branding is all about relating, relatability. And that's why, you know, I could go to a party. For, well, I do go to parties, but I could, let's just say I, I go to a party. I meet 20, 30 people. And there'll be a handful of people that I connect with. And there'll be a handful of people I don't connect with. And that can be based on, I know you're saying to yourself, how could that be? Wouldn't everyone love you, Rudy? But no, that not everyone would love me. It's That's sad. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that uh, we can meet a variety of people and we'll connect with people more based on our personality, our psychology, what we talk about, how we're dressed, um, what our background is. Um, and that could be culturally, that could be um, what we do for a job or for a business. So there could be a, a variety of, of ways that we connect with people. And the people that get us, the people that engage with us, they're our advocates. They see something in us and we see something in them that we like and that we relate to. And re branding is all about building relationships with the wider audience. Uh, and I'm going slightly off topic a bit, but it's all relevant because um, when we, uh, as a predecessor to uh, developing our marketing strategy or our marketing campaigns, we have to really think about the brand. We have to think about, is this campaign aligned with what we want to go to the marketplace as our personality? Um, how we want to tell our story to the wider audience, how we want them to perceive us. Because remember, there is no reality, only perception. So how do we want people to perceive us? And, and that branding has to run congruently throughout all of our business. Um, whether we're a um, you know, plumber, accountant, doctor, uh, who, what else? What other industries? Um, courier driver or courier company, whatever it is, whatever your business is. Branding is branding works or the branding principles work across every business. And that's why brand strategy is extremely important. So I, I tell people again in my workshops when we when we are starting our business and we're looking at our business model, which is really just a, a, a fancy way to say, how do we make money? Well, how do we generate revenue? The next thing we have to have a look at after our business model is our brand strategy. And most businesses miss that step. They go straight to business planning. Okay, we know how we're going to make revenue. So let's come up with the name and let's set up a business plan. And I'm going to be a little bit disruptive, as I'd like to be. Um, and tell you that I don't think that's a good strategy. I don't think it's a good process, I should say. It's a bad process because you have to understand from a branding standpoint what, your, what category you're in, what category you own in the marketplace, who are the competitors in that category, should you even be in that category. You know, and I've had people in my workshops, um, when, we, when we're talking about this, they we get to the end of the session, they go, you know what, given my time over again, we probably wouldn't have gone into this category. Now that we know what a category is and we know what branding is, we probably shouldn't be in there. We're in there now, but knowing what branding is, knowing what the categories are, um, that's going to assist us now moving forward to, because we understand it. We understand 
how consumers think. We understand the psychology now. Uh, and getting back to advertising again, or marketing, we, um, we really need to uh, consider that. So consider the storytelling aspect of it. Uh, and the storytelling, like everything, is a derivative of our brand, our brand position. Uh, so, you know, f fantastic brands like Virgin, um, um, The Body Shop, you know, these are, these are extremely powerful brands. Apple is another one. Uh, they're more than just products on a shelf. If they were just products on a shelf... Um, no one would engage with them. The brands have a true, clear, definitive personality that sits within each of these brands. And I either relate to that brand or I don't. And that's getting into the deeper level of collective beliefs in the market. Uh, and our marketing, again, has to be congruent with our brand. And the point of the podcast really is to get you to think about how what your story is associated with your brand and how you can portray that in your marketing and your communication. You know, framing is extremely important. The way that we frame our messages have to relate back to our brand and, and concurrently have to relate to our market because without our market we don't have a business they're the people that decide in their mind that they want to engage with brand a brand b brand c or brand d and when you've got multiple brands trying to capture the same market uh, the only point well not the only but primarily the the point of difference will be the story and the strategy that sits around that brand. You know, why am I going to relate to brand A over brand B? It will be because of that brand's personality, because I engage with that brand and I'm compelled to know that brand more or to be part of, to be a brand advocate. So, you know, when you're thinking about uh, your, your marketing, just try and consider the stories that you're telling. Uh, and of a spin-off on that, which is uh, around public relations, which isn't my business, I'm not a, I'm not a PR expert, but uh, certainly I assist businesses with developing the framing around PR, and then I get someone else to do it. But uh, this ties in beautifully with, with public relations because, you know, if we were to submit a story to an editor based on what we generally put in our press ads, we never it's never going to see the light of day it's just not going to happen because they're boring and editors just won't pick them up but if we start to focus on the story that sits behind our business that's when um editors journalists engage with what we're doing now it has to be justified we can't just come up with we can't make a story up um, but if you look truly look into your business and, and look at the reasons why you've started it, why you're still in business, how you're helping the community, um, what effect your products and services are having on the market, they're stories, they're things that people eat up and love to read about. So uh, I will end on that note, and I guess what I'm doing is charging everyone that's listening to this to have a slight shift in the way that you develop your marketing and think of stories more so than just your name, rank and serial number type ads. So that's it from me. I hope you're not asleep. I'll, I'll find you. Um, but thank you so much for listening to this. There'll be more podcasts coming out. I'll be, I've been a little bit uh, slack, I have to admit, because I've been traveling a lot. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll endeavor to get more uh, podcasts done over time about different things in marketing and branding. And uh, for further information, please uh, shoot me an email if you'd like to know more. 
uh, or if I can help your business any way, in any way. Uh, my email address is rudy, R-U-D-I, at tfortommarketing.com.au. That's rudy at tmarketing.com.au. Uh, allow probably a couple of days, if you don't mind, for me to respond because my emails are um, getting fairly heavy at the moment. Uh, so, but I would love to hear from you and, uh, and I will see you, well, I won't see you, but you'll hear me on the next podcast. And thanks again for listening. Bye.